I'm happy we skipped the probably futile part where I just try to not fidget around all the time. <laughs> all right, uh, so my name's Kevin Lacker, and I'm a software engineer, and I'm uh, interested in looking for aliens. <laughs> I think I read a book about the state of people looking for aliens, and I started to think, hey, this is something uh, that our society should be doing. And I started to look around and see, yeah, who are all the groups doing things, and you know, what's the state of research and human knowledge? And this particular group seemed to be pretty on top of things and have a lot of interesting projects going on. If you were an astronomer working decades ago, the way you would work is you would capture a picture either by looking through a telescope or by making it in some photography type of way. And then you would look at it with your human eyeball to see what was on that picture. And people made a lot of great discoveries that way. People discovered spiral galaxies by looking at a picture and saying, oh, hey, that looks like a spiral. And as time goes on, we develop better and better telescopes. Nowadays, we capture far more data than we can look at with human eyes. So we have to figure out what we're looking for and build computer systems that scale up. As a rough example, I think the Meerkat system in five minutes can capture tens of terabytes of data. And so a single image you might look at would be, you know, maybe a megabyte of data. And so imagine every few minutes capturing tens of thousands of images. You know, even if you had a staff of people on standby looking at it, you wouldn't be able to do it manually in that amount of time. And so writing algorithms to solve that problem and then scaling them up so they can run on dozens or hundreds of computers is the fundamental task of what's going on. The nature of astronomy overall is that we keep discovering new stuff as people build better hardware that can capture even more data and even better data. And Meerkat is either one of the most cutting edge or the most cutting edge facility for a certain sort of data. The system is, there's a radio telescope, it's extremely complicated. It requires a lot of engineering understanding, astronomical understanding, and then out of it comes these data files. Those data files are made up of zeros and ones. It's always easy from a software point of view to forget that it ties into the real world somewhere. To think just in terms of the algorithms and the code, and it's good to see, to visit, the places where your abstract code is connecting to the real world. So I think that looking for radio signals is an exciting place to be looking for aliens right now because we have these new interferometers coming online and we have a lot of ways where we're gonna have a lot more radio data than we have had in the past. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure who's gonna be watching this, but I think that the more I do anything related to astronomy, the more it seems to me like there's a huge need for people who both understand astronomy and who have software engineering skills. And it's easy to forget that what we're doing here is we're looking for aliens. It's not really clear if there's aliens out there or not. If there are, then I think this is one of the most plausible ways to discover them. And if we do find solid evidence of aliens, that will be a big deal. I think it's pretty plausible that we could just find a signal that someone is sending at us and it's just kind of weak enough that 1990s technology wasn't good enough to find it. But 2020s technology is good enough to find it because it's 100 times better. I think that's very possible, and I think we should go look.